Hi, it is still unfiltered conversation on Cleveland TV. And I always I like to remember you to keep signing up with us on www.clevinan.com. And believe me, Cleveland exists with just a vision to connect the world of tourism for the growth of the continent. All right, today we'll be discussing how to digitize travel and empower the youth in Africa. And my uh, guest this afternoon is uh, Mr. Charles Schiller, who is the CEO of Zeni Hiza. All right. You're welcome to the program, sir. Thank you. I appreciate for for uh, being here. Thank you for having me. Uh, yes, CEO and founder of uh, Zaniheza. Oh, God, all right. All right. Let, let, let's start with the introduction, please. Who is uh, Charles Shima? Uh, Charles Shima. That's a very good question. Um, I am uh, first of all a father. Um, I am a very proud. Um, I should say, Rwandan, an African. Um, I turned 45 years old this year. Um, uh, I love to read. Uh, and um, as of late, really, my passion has been showcasing the destinations in Africa and beyond. Uh, so that's me. <laughs> All right, let, let, let's get to the, what prompted your interest in the Let's say tourism, I'm showcasing the, the, uh, the African side. What prompted your interest in, in tourism? Ever since I was a child, I was born in, in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Happy Independence Day, today is June 30th. And so wow. um, being born in Kinshasa from parents um, who were from, uh, who were from uh, Rwanda and had moved to the DRC, so we traveled. And that gave me um this love for culture from day on so that stayed with me and as i grew up when we moved to rwanda uh in 1987 ish you know i will leave rwanda in 1994 during the genocide against the tutsi unfortunately i made my way to canada and so uh from where i was here in canada i did not go back for 24 years However, I love to travel. I am, you know, um, I've been traveling since I was small and meeting people from all over the world. So that's already been my passion. Uh, I so happened to go to Japan um, when I was 21 on a scholarship. And I saw how uh, they love to travel locally within Japan. I saw how they love their cultures. I saw how they work hard to really maintain their cultures. Japan is known for their technology. However, there is also a big component with their culture. And that stayed with me. And so when I went back to Rwanda after 24 years, and Rwanda is such a beautiful country, and uh, that's when I had this calling, really, um, in connection with everything I've always loved, to uh, start what we know now as Anheza, which, by the way, Anheza is a combination of three words, Murakazaneza, welcome, and Heza, it's beautiful. And so it is my calling um, to showcase our destinations in Africa, especially that in the West, there is all this negative narrative that we always hear. Africa is not safe. I mean, the countries really, because some people think Africa is one big continent. Uh, so when you take the cultures, my passion uh, for that and traveling, and also the technology piece, because I'm a travel tech founder. So why not build this platform where we can connect travelers with local curators, finding those destinations, not just in Africa, but anywhere in the world where they promote an Afrocentric uh, tours and so on. All right, thank you so much. When, when you say Afrocentric tours, what, what exactly do you mean by that? Hmm. Yes, that's a very good question. So really, at the baseline, when we say an Afrocentric is to say the, uh, the, the African descent, because as we know, with the slave trade, with everything that has happened historically, we, there are some countries that have maintained that close link with the African culture. For example, if you look in Latin America, in Brazil, if you look in Brazil, in Colombia, and also in, in uh, Europe, uh, we are not just on the continent. Uh, there is us, the diaspora, who arrived, like in my case, in the 90s. But there is always people who've been all over the world from our continent uh, 
for a long time. Even, let's say, in the Middle East, in Iran, in India. Um, so let's follow um, those type of uh, tours, the experiences, really, and then bring them to the world. But at the heart of Zanihesa is really um, the continent, 54 countries. All right, thank you so much. Uh, you know, a few days back, I was talking with someone, and uh, I asked about a tourist a site in her own state, and she was like, do really have any form of tourist sites in my state, or in her state, rather? All right, you know, ordinarily, there are most people that are not in your profession. They don't really understand what tourism, the full concept of tourism. So to you, as an expert in the field, what constitutes tourism? That's a very good question. I, I, I mean, uh, in in a, in a sense, tourism could be described as the discovery of a new destination, new cultures, new people. The discovery, then you can break it down, and they can talk about responsible tourism. They can talk about, in my case, an experiential tourism, and that's what also I bring forward. Um, when I was born in the Democratic Republic of Congo, um, we went to Rwanda at first when I was seven. I mean, I was a baby, but in my memory, when I, you really n discover a place, I was about seven years old. So even me traveling from DRC uh, to Rwanda, I was a tourist. And what made me connect with the country, because remember when I, at such young age, I didn't even speak speak language fluently, Kenya Rwanda, we all spoke French. So what made me connect with Rwanda at that time, it was cows, <laughs> milk, <laughs> because we didn't have that in Kinshasa. And in fact, I've been always looking for that, just, just being able to go and then, you know, milk a cow and, uh, you know, to, you know, you find something really in depth and we need that uh, when you discover a destination, as I just said, in terms of tourism. Mm. All right, in most of your writers, I've gone through your site, and in most of the writers, you always talk about the beauty, the unicorn in the travel sector. What are your, what exactly are you trying to relate to here? Uh, the unicorn, or? Yeah. Now, building the unicorn, all right, in the travel sector, what does, what do you mean by that? Building a unicorn. Well, I'm a dreamer. I am a dreamer. Um, one of my heroes is the president of Rwanda who said, dream big. Please understand that with Zaniheza, when I started the journey, it's not primarily the monetary gain. Um, because I've lived in Canada for over 24 years, I've worked wide. When you look at Africa and when we look at all opportunities, then you say, well, how can I build something? such as a business that is going to create an impact. For example, the way Tony Elumelu has done, you, yeah. you see. And then to do that, you, you, when we say unicorn, that's a company that has reached a billion dollar status. And I always say this because in America, when they look at um, people of, um, it's a black people, the African descent, it's like we are limited as to how far we can achieve. And so why can't we have a Bill Gates who looks like us? You know, uh, why not? You know, we, we right. that's what I mean. Okay. You've talked one or two things about um, Zani Heza. Uh, what is the <clears> story about uh, Zani Heza? What are Zani Heza? What is his vision? And objective the primary focus i know you've talked one or two things about it but i just want you to like build more on that let's get to know more about your company absolutely uh Zani has a, it is a platform a, a, it is an ai i've always pitched Zani has a to be an ai platform so the technology is at the center of it it's a travel tech so it's a it's an a, it's an ai powered platform to connect the travelers all over the world uh, with local curators uh, in places that we find an Afrocentric tours and activities. In this case, we say it's not a tour, it's an experience. Zaniheza, um, as a platform, uh, I put 
forward in Africa, destinations that are not usually seen. Um, uh, because if you Google travel to Africa, you will get over 80% wildlife and safari. This sounds bizarre, but some places here in America, they, they, they see Africa as this big dark continent, like we don't even have cities. So why not showcase uh, cities? We have beautiful cities that that people can go in their visits. You know, we should not just go and see the wildlife. So you find things like uh, city, um, things to do on the continent. You find uh, things to do with uh, food. I mean, who doesn't like food? Culinary. <laughs> just building this cool platform. Because in Europe, it's normal. But when you come to our continent, we really don't have anything until Zanheza that, that will make you find, hey, I, I want to go to this museum. Hey, I want to go to Mozambique. They have beautiful things to do. Guinea, you see, not just the normal other place. So I want to create this place where we as people from the continent and in the diaspora can find things that are easy to do and fun to do on the continent, but also that give us the knowledge to connect with our cultures. So what are your views on interconnection within between African countries in terms of tourism in this regard? Yeah, th that is a very good question. Um, I think the challenge we face is visa and the cost airlines. Those are the two things that uh, traveling within the continent is a big uh, challenge. Um, we, I am hearing that there is now an appetite to to fix that because really the tourism in Africa is growing in stages. Um, you know, it's now like in the last five years that we are now seeing, especially with the pandemic, this regional tourism growing. Uh, before that, tourism really on the continent uh, was seen and primarily still seen as an international, people coming in from Europe and, and so on. Um, I think most of well-to-do people you know, in Nigeria or in Rwanda, they would rather go to Dubai. <laughs> and um, and they may say, hey, I don't need a visa. And so uh, I am lucky because with my Canadian passport, I can go to many places. Uh, but in Africa, I think visa is one of the biggest challenge that I hope that we've, uh, I guess, the after that they're going to solve. But also there is uh, the cost. Um, now, when we break it down here, I think demand is and, uh, and the supply. That's why I would like to really encourage anyone, rather than complain, hey, you know, it costs airlines and so on. Yes, because the demand and supply is not quite there yet. If we all travel to destinations like Tokyo, Dubai, then we will never create enough supply on the continent for us now to, to say, well, let's now travel within the continent. Let's use Z Zaniheza. So Zaniheza is a platform, um, you know, People must understand if you don't use it, then we will not have enough tractions for us to speak on behalf of travelers. Just like here in North America, uh, if people have questions about housing now, Airbnb, they will go talk to Brian Chesky. Mm -hmm. You see, so we need to really create that enough uh, demand and and supply. We need to travel within the continent, just as as I have, because for the last four years I have completely stopped traveling to Tokyo. I primarily go to Rwanda now. All right, thanks, so Simone. We'll, we'll, we'll get back to the main topic of this course now, which is digitizing, okay, travel, and then how to empower the African youth. So, what are your views on that? Travel within the continent? No, how to digitize travel and how to use it to empower the youth yes. in Africa. Yes. Uh, well, I mean, I started the digitization. Um, we have to build it. Uh, now there is a big talk on uh, an AI, but when you look on the continent, and I know this because I follow what what happened in every country, let's even talk about the tourism boards. Do you know how challenging it is to find countries in Africa with tourism boards website? Out of 54 countries, I've looked at each one of them, and there's probably 10 countries that have a fully functional website tourism board. 
So already that's a challenge because you need to digitize uh, your tourism product within that level because that's how we come in and then build on that. Um, when you travel to even Rwanda, which is making really uh, great work, um, if you want to take a, a bus, like I want to travel from Kigali and I want to go uh, uh, visit the countryside, very challenging to find a ticket online, similar to how you will buy a train ticket. You can literally plan a whole trip to most places in Europe not being there. Buy a ticket online, the accommodation, the meals, everything on one platform. We don't have that quite yet. Uh, things have to be bought within the country, um, and, and that's where I am solving. Uh, so if you see about Zaniheza, um, because when we say about the digitization, it's not just the multi-day tours that have always been around. How about something really quick? Uh, Nigeria is such a beautiful country, and <laughs> I don't know, uh, there's a lot of things that seems to be offline. Why? In a country that of 100 million people, uh, you know, I would love to just go, okay, I see this. But also with the digitization comes the question of safety, right? Comes the, how do you eliminate those risks of safety or of, of fraud? I'm getting those questions. So um, as uh, Vusi once said, the continent of Africa needs platform. With platforms, we can bring um, uh, many of those local curators online. Um, and we've seen those models successful. That's why, like, Alibaba, the Amazons, Airbnb, they are successful. So do you think um, improvement of AI to curb insecurity in Africa can be effective? I'm sorry, can, can you say that again? Do you believe that the involvement of AI, which is artificial intelligence, according to you, can it be effective in curbing insecurity in Africa? Um, well, now really, I think the challenge we have to first solve with uh, using an AI uh, is building the database. Mm -hmm. You see, Africa has been very lucky with the cell phone. We leapfrogged, right? We, we skipped. Suddenly we were using uh, cell phones, no landline. Even though I leave that sort of a challenge, because with the landline, countries that have had landline, like in Canada, you see, they've had that progress to think about different situations. Because if you have, let's say, if you have an earthquake, then you can still fall back on the landline. Now, the security issue, because then uh, data, because people have to remember AI, that... It's just the technology you use um, as an interface, whether it's a chatbot or chat GPT, but that information comes from somewhere. We have to source it. So where is the source? All right. You, you, you did mention some challenges facing um, the tourism sector in Africa in your, your last speech. All right. Now, whose responsibility is, all right? whose responsibility is it to begin to miss and attend to these challenges? Is it that of the stakeholders or is it that of the government? And then if it is of the government or even the stakeholders, what is expected of these people? Responsibility uh, is, it falls within us in the private sector. Mm. Um, the government can be as strong as, as, uh, as we also fortify um, and there are some areas where the government, yes, have to chip in because building a tourism board website, that's not going to be Charles doing it. Um, but we can work together. We have to reach a point where we work together. We just have to stop the blame game. We, we have to stop the blame game. We have to stop complaining. Like in the last four years um, that I've built Zaniheza, I am bootstrapped. And I can tell you that four years later, I, I, I have uh, knowledge and the data that can help many governments in Africa, should they come and talk to me, um, in terms of uh, how do they market their destinations? Uh, do you see, how do we get all those clean data they need to build an AI? Um, 
because uh, I, I can see the so you know the problem they they face. If you don't have a tourism website, then well, why and what do we need? Is it content? And mostly, mostly, um, how do we solve the negative narrative that we always hear about countries? So responsibility is really everyone who is a descendant of the continent in Africa. This is your cue uh, to do something. No matter how small, mm. it counts. And you don't need to be wealthy because I didn't start on here so we have all the money in the world. But there's just a passion to say, you know, if we don't solve this, who will? Exactly. Now, you, talk, you did talk about uh, the blame trade in Africa, and I think we are very used to that. When anything happens, we tend to shift responsibilities to others and all that. And uh, for me, actually, Africans, we are not really even ready for the future of ICT. But I, see, I wanted to give your, 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 your stand on this, the future of African youth in the future of ICT. What are your views? ICT, well, the field is huge in ICT, uh, really, really huge. I think uh, our youth in Africa is the youngest uh, continent on the planet that is an asset. Mm. Um, Are the youth really ready to face what we call when ICT is fully implemented? I, I, I think let, let, let's even let's answer it that way. Are the youth of yes. Africa ready? All right, for the growth in future ICT, are we ready to face that growth? They are. Okay. They are. I have seen the talents from Rwanda. They they are many talented young women and men. What they like is the tool and perhaps the patience. Uh, and they have to be ready to make the sacrifices. You can't just wake up and become a Elon Musk or become, you know, it starts from somewhere. Um, so I think they are very ready. We just have to give them the resources, empower them with the knowledge. Uh, and, 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 and then um, have them think about our solutions. Eh? We have to think about our solutions. We, we, we can't just make things that are similar to what is being built in Canada be, because exactly. Canada, is, they are solving their own problem. Exactly. Uh, but give me a tool that solves our problem. Yes, they are ready. In fact, I, I work with the youth. I've worked with the youth in Rwanda and uh, some of it have been really to babysit them and, and you know, to teach them you know, small things that help. But they are, they are ready. We have to believe in them as well we have to believe in them so if you are a parent who has who has a job who who can afford go buy your kid a computer uh, you know if you can donate computers donate computers those who are who wants to donate don't give give us uh, you know i was visiting rwanda once and then the, and i went to to this small city and uh, town and the kids were asking me for money and candy and i'm like why and they say because when the tourists come from europe they give us candy and i'm like why don't you take them to your home and then feed them beans like we have that you see so that mentality has to uh, change so let's uh, let's give us uh, the youth uh, the tool they need but they are ready i believe in that yes all right, thank you so much, Mr. Charles Shima. Now, your last word from uh, Zani Heza. So, the African continent, the youth, and the government of Africa. What message do you have for them? As it relates to the message. Yeah, uh, as I've been saying, uh, most of the backlash I receive and and is is from my own people, right? Um, they don't just believe in what I'm doing because. Uh, I think I, I'm told over and over that some of my people will show up once and Heza is built, and that's sad. But you you need to understand that someone like me or anyone else who is building for the continent or for the African diaspora, some of us have this vision for the future, um, and we need your support. Um, like I said, I no longer travel to Japan. I cannot compare tourism in Japan and everything they have. If I have to think what I get in Japan for value, for money-wise, I will not travel to the continent. Like, I will not. Why? And so, some of my decisions are based on this passion for the continent, but also know it's the future. And so, Zaniheza needs the, the platform. I'm, I am one of the many, but I am the one who is building this platform. We need the support as a traveler, book a trip um, and 
yeah, do what you can do so that we can keep moving forward, but also believe in the continent, believe in the future of our beautiful continent.